video is on subtopic 3.4 polymers. We've got a number of um, learning objectives and science understandings that we need to look at. So the first thing that we need to be able to do is identify the repeating unit of a polymer given the structural formula of a section of chain. Um, the concept that we're looking at here is that polymers, or they can be called macromolecules, are very large molecules and they're composed of small repeating structural units. Um, so here's an example. We've got polyethene, or it can be called polyethylene. It's a long-chained molecule and it's made up of repeating units. Um, if we look at the diagram here, we've got a little n here. So it shows that what's within this bracket here is repeated numerous times. We know that it is eth, so it had to be two carbons inside of the repeating unit. Um, it can also be written as this form here where we end up with our um, bonds on the side here which shows that it continues on and N tells you that that's the small number of linking units which are called so-called monomers. So monomer meaning one, polymer meaning many. So here is our monomer of polyethene. What happens is we go through a, a polymerization process. You can see that the double bond here has been um, broken and we end up with just single bonds forming through. We'll go through the process later when we look at how these are formed. But at this stage, you need to just be able to look at the formula here or the structure, sorry, here of the polymer and you need to show what the, the repeating unit is. So the second learning objective that we need to look at is for you to be able to draw the structural formula of an addition polymer that could have been produced from monomers containing one carbon-carbon double bond given the structure of the monomers or vice versa. So let's have a look here. Addition polymerization occurs when monomer molecules link without the loss of atoms. So nothing's lost, it's just added on. Addition polymers can be synthesized from alkene molecules. molecules. Now if we think about in semester one, we looked at alkenes. They have um, a carbon-carbon double bond, which it gives you the ene name. So there are two ways of forming polymers, both addition and condensation. In stage one chemistry now with the new program, we'll be looking at addition reactions only. And in stage two chemistry, the then condensation reactions will be considered. So here's our um, information about addition polymerization. So double bonds are broken to form continuous chains. So here's our, our um, monomer and through a reaction with a catalyst we end up with that double bond breaking and we have them the, um, the monomers adding to each other. Here we have three examples and I'm going to go through the, each of those on for the following slides. So we've got polypropylene um, with a monomer of propene which is here. So one double bond, three carbons, so propene. We also have an example here for uh, polyvinyl chloride, which is PVC, you've probably heard of it before. We have a monomer here of chloroethene. So we have a chloro group on an ethene molecule. And the final example that we're going to look at is polystyrene. You would have again heard of that. The monomer here is styrene. So we have our structural ring structure here, and here is our double bond. So let's look at the first example of polyethylene or polyethene. So we've got many ethene molecules and through a process we end up with polyethene. Okay, so to do this we need pressure, we need heat and we also need a catalyst. That's the only way that this, this process is going to continue. If that happens, when, then the ethene will polymerize, make long chains of carbon atoms and you will end up with polyethene. There are no double bonds in the polymer, but there were double bonds in the monomer. Okay, so our final product is a saturated hydrocarbon. Here's the second example that I want to look at, which is chloroethene. Again, we have our double bond. Through the addition polymerization process, you can see now that we have polyvinyl chloride, and again, no double bonds in the final. So this, the double bond has been broken and we end up with our polyvinyl chloride. 
Again, we need pressure, heat and a catalyst for this to occur. If we have those three, uh, three conditions, then chloroethene will polymerize and you will end up with polyvinyl chloride. Again, as the note says there, no double bonds in the polymer. It is an alkane. Here's our third example, so polystyrene. So here's our styrene molecule. Okay, so we've got many of these undergoes polymerization and this is what we end up with. Now this structure looks a little bit more difficult than the others but if you look at it all that's happened double bond up here has broken and they've all added together. Again pressure, heat and a catalyst and we end up with the long chains to form polystyrene. Our next learning objective for the polymers section is that we need to understand that properties of organic polymers will depend on interactions between the polymer chains. So we need to look at these organic polymers and then have a look at what's happening between the polymer chains that we've got. So the properties can include, the ones that we're looking at in year 11, is strength, stiffness, hardness, density and melting point. Um, they can be changed in a number of ways. The first way is looking at chain length. Then we can also look at cross-linking. And then three and four is crystallinity and plasticizers. At the end of this visit video and in the presentation, you'll notice those two sections are looked at in detail. I won't focus on that in my video though. We're just going to look at chain length and cross-linking. So chain length, if we think back to semester one when we were looking at organic chemistry and we were looking at dispersion forces. We looked at what happens as the molecule becomes larger and our dispersion forces increase because there are more atoms therefore more electrons so that temporary dipole um, can have a, a greater um, it can cause have a greater effect. A polymer with a long chain, many carbon atoms, it, as that gets longer, the material becomes stronger, stiffer, and the melting point gets higher. When we're looking at cross-linking, we're looking at two different processes or two different types of polymers. There are thermoplastic, which are also called thermosoftening, or thermosetting. If we have a thermosetting polymer, then those polymers have chains crossed linked by a covalent bond. So the chain is then linked to another chain via a covalent bond. These, the starting materials, you put into a mould to form a desired shape. You then will need to heat it and initiate it with a UV light. And chemical reactions occur to form the cross links between the chains. The resulting three-dimensional solid structure cannot therefore be changed. Further heating will not cause the polymer to soften, melt or change shape. This is in a thermosetting polymer, unlike in a thermosoftening polymer. So examples of our thermosetting polymers are melamine, melamine resin, which is what your plastic furniture is made out of, bakelite used in saucepan handles and electric light fittings, and epoxy resins, which we can find in many glues. Here is a picture showing a typical structure of a thermosetting polymer. We've got natural rubber here, polymers, and being cross-linked with sulphur. So you can see here's our cross-linking happening between the green chain and the blue chain. We've got these links here. What that does is it causes vulcanised rubber and that, that's what we're talking about with the cross-linking between the chains. The structure of a thermoplastic or a thermosoftening polymer um, is different. We end up with no cross uh, links. We've, this time we've got a long chain of carbon atoms, but the forces between the chains are only weak secondary interactions. So we have this, these are more suited to uh, conditions where we want to recycle the plastics. When heated, thermoplastics can soften and therefore reform into a shape that we want for the second um, use for it, what our desired outcome is. Only small amounts of energy are required to overcome the secondary interactions between the chains and therefore separate those chains. 
So here's our examples of thermoplastics and thermosetting polymers. So the two different types of polymers. Here we have thermoplastics where we've only got interactions between the two chains. And so if we help heat it, we can melt them. Here's our thermosetting polymers. These ones here have got the cross links between them. What happens if we heat those is that these it can't melt and so we end up with degradation or charring um, and burning. Here's a table of some different types of plastics and examples of what's acceptable for recycling. You can have a look at these. I would recommend that you um, do some further research on them and have a look at the different types of polymers that are involved. So you can see with this um, these examples, we have something here like PET, PET uh, type of plastic, the uses of it and what it can get made into. Uh, we've got some high density polyethylene here, uh, our polyvinyl chloride, uh, low density polyethylene, uh, polypropylene, polystyrene and then other types of plastics as well. So that's it for the video. As I said, there is there are further slides um, on the presentation looking at plasticizers and crystallinity, but at the moment that's as far as we'll go. See you next time.